Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Um, just going to um, something I've been meaning to do for a while is 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 have a decent look at the surfaces that SolidWorks creates. Uh, as far as what the output is, um, quite often you'll supply a file to a client as a step or something like that, export it from SolidWorks. Uh, and the thing with SolidWorks is it doesn't actually let you know um the underlying geometry um like the degree of the surface that's exporting um point counts anything like that so basically you input some curves you uh set some boundary conditions uh and then SolidWorks sort of figures figures the rest out and and quite often as you may have noticed um you end up with irregularities in your surfaces you might end up with um, crinkles or wrinkles near a boundary um, and there's no great way in SolidWorks to interrogate why that's happening. So I thought why don't I just make some surfaces um, with various ways of uh, controlling them, whether they're made from curves or edges or a combination of curves and edges and then I'll export those surfaces and um, interrogate them in, in Rhino and see see what SOLIDWORKS is actually creating. So um, to start with, I've just got a, the first thing to do would be just a, a couple of curves. So say a loft between two splines. Okay, so those are d degree two splines, which have three, um, three CVs. And that's just a straight loft between them. I haven't put any uh, constraints on the, on the ends. And over here I have two splines which are degree 5, so 6 CVs, to see what will happen there. So again, loft between the two profiles and push OK. OK, so here we are over in Rhino. I've just imported those two surfaces. So I'll bring up the, um, the control points. OK. So the surface here had the degree two input splines. That's come straight across as you'd expect. The same amount of uh, CVs on the surface. And again over here, a degree five surface with six CVs on each end. So if I say type in what, it'll tell me. See here it says UV, U, degre U direction, degree five, point count six. V, degree, v direction, degree one, point count two. Okay, so so in that case it respects the degree of the input curves. Now I'm going to swap back over to Rhino, our uh, SolidWorks, and then change these so the end constraints we've got normal to profile. And again on this one. Okay, right now I'm going to save these out as a step again and put them in Rhino. Okay, here we are back in Rhino with the um, updated surfaces that are now normal for profile at the ends. Um, so you'd expect more CVs uh, in this direction because it needs to be able to, we need to control the tendency there. So if I turn on points, you can see there we've got extra CVs this way and also as it looks we've got extra CVs in the other direction whereas before there was uh, three points which is how many we have in the input splines now it's got four so if I go type in what okay so it's degree three in both directions with four CVs and interestingly enough it looks over here like we have a multi-span surface as well yeah look at all those okay so our nice degree five Input curve has been um, rebuilt into a multi span surface. Okay, degree three in both directions. Um, 18 points along there. Okay, so I might just try this with the boundary surface now, see what the difference is. So we've got 18 points. 
along this direction, which is uh, created with a degree 5 input curve with 6 points in it. Okay, now in SOLIDWORKS I'll recreate that with boundary, surface, normal profile, and again, boundary. Okay, I'm going to save that out and put it into the Rhino. Okay, here we are back in Rhino, it's set with these surfaces, uh, boundary surfaces now instead of um, lofts. So I'll turn the control points on. Right, let's start with this one. This this is seems to have more, okay, 33 CVs in this direction. So with a the loft, there was, what, 18? So almost doubled the amount of CVs in that direction in the U direction and it looks like there's more CVs uh, on the um, other surface as well so this surface if you remember originally input was one two three CVs so a degree two surface now this is a degree three surface um, multi-span surface with a lot more control points. So obviously SOLIDWORKS needs to do something the way it constructs things. It so far appears it can't, once you put an edge constraint on a surface it, it, it can't uh, create anything above a degree 3 surface. I'm going to try now um, creating a surface with uh, four curves. So I'll define curves in the other direction and see what happens there. Right now we're going to try um, the same thing as before, it's using four curves, so two curves in each direction. So first of all I'll create a loft and guide curves. And these uh, guide curves here are normal to the profile plane here, so I shall make it normal profile on that end. And then the same thing on this end. Two profiles two guide curves and first profile normal profile okay and the guide curves are over here uh, uh, degree 5 they're curvature continuous uh, if you imagine this if I extrude it out each of these curves the curvature continuous to that extrude I'm just interested to see if SOLIDWORKS is going to respect um, or, or, or keep make the surface degree 5 in this direction um, because the profile, the guide curves are. So I'm just going to drop this into Rhino and have a look. Okay, here we are over in Rhino. Um, i going to turn the control points on and type what? which tells us um, that this surface here is still degree 3 in both directions. It's a single span surface, but uh, the input curves controlling this in SOLIDWORKS are only degree 2. And over here, we have... Okay, no, it hasn't carried through my guide curve, uh, which I made in SOLIDWORKS out of uh, a single span. Degree 5 curve is the V direction and it has 10 points, degree 3. Okay. I'm going to swap over to SOLIDWORKS again. Okay, back in SOLIDWORKS, I'll try the same thing, except I will get rid of the constraint on both surfaces and I'll export it back over to Rhino. Okay, back in Rhino, I've taken, removed the constraint, um, normal to profile, let's see what it says, okay, it's exactly the same, okay, so with the loft, SOLIDWORKS, um, with four curves, so two profiles and two guides, it will, um, it will uh, just make it a degree, three multi-span multi surface in both U and V direction. Okay, I'm going back to SOLIDWORKS. 
Right, I'm going to try the same thing now, but with a boundary surface. So, direction one, direction two, and I'll just leave these with no, um, with no, um, constraint on the boundaries. Begin with boundary surface, direction one, direction two. Okay, see what they look like in solid, uh, in Rhino. Okay, we're back in Rhino, and it looks straight away like I think they're both single span surfaces, so this could be good. Okay, so we've got no constraints um, on either surface. We'll have a look at this one here first. Type in what? Okay, so with a boundary surface with no constraints and curves in both the U and V direction, it respects the degree of the input curve. However, over here on the surface that is created in SOLIDWORKS with degree two uh, curves in both directions with three CVs, it's, it's changed it into a degree three surface. Okay, I'm going to go back to SOLIDWORKS now and um, make one of the edges normal to profile and see if it does anything. Okay, back in SOLIDWORKS, going to change this surface here, the sketch here to be normal to profile. Um, and also on this. And now I'll export this over to Rhino again. Okay, back in Rhino, it's not looking great straight away. You can see all those uh, ISO curves here. There's lots of... Um, points and multi-span surfaces again. So let's have a look at this one first. Okay, so in the V direction, it's kept it as degree five. So V direction is this way. Um, and U direction's gone from a nice degree five, which it was down to degree three with 32 points. So a very heavy surface there, look at that. And it looks like the same's happened here. So SOLIDWORKS has taken the surface, as soon as you put a constraint on the edge here, it um, just packs in the points. So the conclusion with uh, four curves, so two curves in each direction, the loft will, even with no constraints, will, const will create a degree three multi-span surface. Uh, with and without a boundary constraint. Whereas a boundary surface with four curves, no constraints, respects the input curve degree. However, with constraints, it changes the surface to be a degree three multi-span surface, which looks like it comes out quite heavy. Lots of CVs. Okay, on to the next uh, test now. Cheers. I've just uh, discovered something interesting. A few, few, uh, on the boundary surface, you increase the tangent influence up to 100, then you get quite a different result in Rhino. So, what I have here, I'll just delete this. I have two surfaces here, so this surface is the one with no, uh, the tangent influence is on zero, and this one, tangent influence is on 100. So on this surface here, if I turn the points on, and here, this surface is degree five in this direction. As you can see, degree five, but it has point count of 12. So that's with zero tangent influence. Over here, with 100% tangent influence off the normal profile, it is degree five. However, the point count is six, so it's single span in that direction, um, which is much better uh, as far as not having all those lovely SOLIDWORKS boundary wrinkles and what have you. Um, whether you can get it to do that in both directions, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll find out later in one, one of my later tests. So in my last test, I um, made a boundary surface here, and we change the boundary condition in direction one uh, to normal and then the tangent influence to 100% which resulted in 
the surface being single span in one direction. So now I was going to try uh, adding a, another constraint in the second direction. So with these curves here, I've made them um, normal to the, the plane on the end here. So go normal to profile. Now, first up, I'm going to try it with uh, tangent influence of zero and drop that in right and see what happens. Then I'll try it with tangent influence of 100 and see if we uh, get a single span in the second direction as well. Back in Rhino here, um, it doesn't look that successful. <laughs> As you can see, uh, our nice single span surface in this direction has disappeared and has, type in what, okay. Everything's uh, it's degree three in both directions and equal amount of points, 34 points in each direction, which is pretty heavy. So you can see how we end up with wrinkles in SolidWorks. Look at the, the point density along this, this boundary. Anyway, okay, I'm going to go back into SolidWorks and uh, and increase the uh, tangent influence to 100% on the other and see what happens. Back in SolidWorks, change the tangent influence to 100%. Okay. Okay, back in Rhino. Turn the points on, looks a little less dense along the end there, um, let's just have a look at, uh, okay, 32 and 34 points, degree 3 in both directions, so a little change there in the, for the CV count, but uh, nothing great. Okay, so I think the conclusion there is if you have um, a boundary constraint in one direction, on both ends, and turn the tangent influence up to 100%, like in the early example, then you'll end up hopefully with single span in that direction. In the other direction, where it's, on, it's got no constraints, it's just got a boundary defined by a curve or an edge, then um, it will uh, it'll just do whatever it wants to do. Okay, okay I'm going to wrap this video up now. Um, I think um, all this has proved to me is that uh, you, you you're never really sure what you're going to get with SOLIDWORKS so um and things change depending on um tangent influences and uh boundary constraints so uh whatever you end up with with your result between the um the boundaries of your surface is uh you don't really have much control over unless you start throwing in cross curves in which case um you can end up with other issues uh, I have found though SOLIDWORKS, try using a loft if you're getting those lovely little wrinkles and stuff that you sometimes get on the side of a boundary surface for no apparent reason. When you think your input geometry is really clean and you still get wrinkles, you start pulling your hair out, try a loft. Uh, and if a loft doesn't work, try changing the direction of the loft around. Um, you just got to try everything basically. But I'd also recommend um, install the demo of Rhino on your computer. It's um, use it for 90 days and you can fully save it, but after that period you can still use it uh, to import um, geometry and analyze it. Well worth doing. Okay, thank you. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.